was a young man from Saskatchewan who headed off to fight in the Second World War, Private Lawrence S. Gordon. But he wouldn't return home. Gordon was killed in action and his body was never found. A mystery his family has been trying to solve for decades. But now, a chance their work may have finally paid off. Here's Bonnie Allen with Finding Private Gordon. This is the wallet that was in my Uncle Lawrence's uh, back pocket at the time that he was killed. It's very precious to us. That's why I keep it in my vault in a sealed envelope. It's burned and stained, but it's the only thing Lawrence Gordon has to remember his uncle, Private First Class Lawrence S. Gordon, his namesake, and a World War II soldier whose body disappeared. I probably would have been six or seven years old when I can first recall my father uh, telling me about it. I thought, how can there not be a body when you've got the wallet? And I simply felt that Uncle Lawrence's body had been lost and I'd never know where it was. The mystery of this wallet and his uncle spans seven decades and four countries. It's taken the dedication of family and the persistence of strangers to possibly crack the case. It begins here on a farm near East End, Saskatchewan. The homestead is still in the family. Uncle Lawrence, he was a horseman and cowman. Sam Gordon grew up hearing the story, how his uncle Lawrence, in his early 20s, traveled south to Wyoming in search of work and adventure. The task force from Japan went to work. The farm kid from Saskatchewan decided that the U.S. military was better equipped, so he signed up to fight for the American Army. By 1944, he and his unit had made their way to France. The young private was doing reconnaissance, spying on the enemy. On August 13, 1944, near Normandy, his armored vehicle was hit by a German tank. All that made it home was his wallet. Inside, no identification, just photos taken on the front step of his childhood home. The little blonde boy on the right, that's Sam. And where is it taken? Right on the steps of the house there. So right here? Right there, yep. Grandmother got, was, like I said, was pretty mad over the army not ever telling her anything. And it was, she couldn't understand why they could send a wallet right to her door and then, then he just disappeared after that. Private Gordon's mother wrote countless letters to the U.S. Army demanding details on the location of her son's gravesite. Her frustration is clear. October 8, 1946. I've written you before and also to the Red Cross, but as yet I have failed to get a satisfactory reply. I should think by this time they should have located the grave. Please let me know. The one in his dress uniform is the best photo we have of him. Did your father ever tell you why he named you after Lawrence? Oh, he did. It was to ensure that Uncle Lawrence wasn't forgotten. And he never was. Now a lawyer in Medicine Hat, this Lawrence promised his father that he would find and visit the grave. At one point, he flew to France to search the American military cemetery. He found Lawrence S. Gordon's name on the wall of the missing. But it turns out not just family was searching for answers. Jed Henry is a 32-year-old freelance cameraman from Wisconsin. His grandfather fought in the same company as Private Gordon. I had an interest in my grandfather and in, in his service during World War II. And, um, you know, for the last 10 years or so, I've been researching the group that he fought with. Henry discovered that 44 men in the unit had been killed in action, but only 43 bodies were recovered. He couldn't figure out why. There's sort of a, a soft spot um, for soldiers who are unknown or, uh, you know, never identified. And so it just kind of bothered me. Um, and I just wanted to look into it and see if there was a chance that maybe we could find him. Jed Henry tracked down the Gordons, then spent the next two years making repeated requests for documents and military records from the American government and Army. If the body's in the U.S. system, you're almost doomed before you start. 
But finally, a breakthrough. The government declassified war records that contained forensic details about unidentified soldiers. They're called X-Files. They contain bone charts and dental records. Initially, it was believed that Private Gordon could be X-6. Essentially, there was just a pelvis left of that particular person. And I said to Jed, that doesn't fit with the wallet. Uh, the wallet's in pretty darn good shape, and so I couldn't possibly imagine how you could have just a pelvis left and have the wallet in that condition. So they looked further, mapping where Private Gordon died, who he was with, what kind of injuries he might have had. It all pointed to X3. You know, we knew this was our shot, um, and that this was really the only body that could be, uh, you know, Lawrence Gordon. But what no one expected, X3 was buried with Nazi soldiers in a German military cemetery in France. You can't help but wonder uh, when he's among 12,000 other uh, deceased German soldiers, uh, whether or not he may be even be laying beside the one that killed him. You don't know. How is this possible? Well, it's only speculation, but it wasn't uncommon for soldiers to scavenge clothes off the enemy. So the family believes Private Gordon was found badly burned in a German uniform and was mistaken for a Nazi soldier. Of course, what they really need to prove this theory is DNA. What happened next is extraordinary. Lawrence Gordon, his brother Sam and Jed Henry flew to the German cemetery near Normandy. They convinced officials in both Germany and France to remove the bones of X3 from this burial cask. French police kept guard as forensic experts painstakingly documented every step. So did you expect all this? No, I did not. The bones are now being tested inside a national crime lab. The DNA compared to samples given by Private Gordon's nephews. There's a great deal of pride that goes into what we've done. You know, this may or may not be PFC Gordon. Uh, we won't know until the science is back with an answer. Um, but I think what we've done is I think we've honored his memory by doing everything we can to identify him. It will provide closure for the family. But uh, Lawrence is already convinced. He saw the skull and the teeth and believes it matches his uncle's dental records. For him, the search is over. It was like, there's no doubt we've got him. Lawrence is already making plans for a proper burial, perhaps here in the rolling hills of southwestern Saskatchewan, alongside family members who died waiting for Private Gordon to finally come home. Bonnie Allen, CBC News, East End, Saskatchewan.